The pressure to deliver in race photography, especially on race day, it's almost like a different benchmark I set myself. Are you there to do a commercial shoot where you can direct every nuance and the, the, the talent of the athlete is literally, you know, he's working for you? A dagger up like a tiered rugby photo and I'm gonna shoot from down there, so. Last group photo of the year. Or are you there to document the sport as it's historically unfolding, where, where you're not dictating any of the action or any of the weather, any of the light. You're there to, you know, capture it as it is. You never know who's going to win the race, right? There's only so many days you shoot on race day and there's only one race winning photo. Yeah, you might have a quali or a semi when they kind of in a racing environment, but the true race photo is like, how did you get that winning race run? You don't know if number 10 guy coming across the finish line is a winner in downhill. But you fucking hope that you've had a, a race winning photo of him because if he wins a race and you don't have a race winning photo of him, you failed at your job to document that day. Having lived and breathed the sport, you're not gonna get a, a good shot that's gonna speak to others or tell the story or evoke some kind of emotion in the viewer. So that's what I'm hoping to do. Okay, Monday is leaving the event you've just shot the week before, packing, doing laundry, driving, flying to the next event. Tuesday is literally shooting pits, getting set up. Uh, maybe team's got new jerseys, new bikes. Wednesday is you're shooting full bike, you're shooting track walk, and then you're going back up again and you're shooting juniors, but you just shoot the top of the track. You come down, well that's a short day, you're editing until 12, 1, and then you get up, 8.30, you would practice, be practice, but it's those juniors you just shot, but it's also the elite women. And basically you shoot that, and then you shoot junior qualies at the end of the day. Next day is quali and junior race, generally got start lists, you're shooting a bit more refined. That's the day you shoot the most photos, you know, and you would have edited till 1, 2, 2 in the morning. 2.45, over and out. So on finals day, the pressure is elevated immensely. Quick decision making uh, and other decisions affect outcomes of what you get and where you go and you know why you do things or choose to do things those are all spur of the moment things based on what's happening in front of you fully 200 in case there's some good slip reaction on that back corner scenic with the leaves wide here and then just an extra shot in case i fuck up one of those two shots there's a million algorithms going in your head. Now it's subconsciously, because we've been doing it so long. Race day months now, I didn't want to go to the finish too soon. And I also didn't want to give up an action shot. I didn't want to just get a portrait of him after he's crossed the line. And sure enough, you get to Monsonet and the finish bowl, the one spot they had for us, you couldn't even see the two jumps and the drop. And then the other media box, you could see the two jumps and drops, but then you wouldn't have been able to have any emotion of him once he's crossed the line because you're too far up. So there was actually no real good spot to shoot the finish line in Montsenam. So I'm gonna shoot the first three riders from here, frame by crowd, then hustle up and see if I can get my remote set up on the scrub step down. Oh, he scrubbed like a maniac. So you find yourself moving, and then I remember like Bernard was coming and he had qualified well. And I was like kind of in no man's land. I thought I could get from whoever was just before Bernard to where I was headed to. And I couldn't, I got halfway there, but there was too much crowd and too many poodles and too many babies and I couldn't get through. Bernard's fourth split was up and I saw I had basically 10 seconds to get a shot. I had to climb on this ski blower, like. What's wrong with him, man? Got two shots. And I was like, okay, sweet, if Bernard wins, I've got a shot. And then I got near the finish area, and then I see the VIP area, and I 
thought that I might need to go in the VIP area, so I got myself put on the list. That, that was a pain in the ass. So I kind of have to drink champagne to blend in. Right. <laughs> I'm not sure how I want this to come across. Basically took my photographer vest and tucked my shirt in and made it look like I, anyway, I just got in the VIP area. So then I basically had the finished bowl plus action, but most important story of that day, in my opinion, was to show the crowd as much as possible. And this is how I got it when Stevie Smith won, when Benoit won in Vigé, uh, when Loic won in Vigé the year before. Certain venues, depending on how the crowd is, that becomes a story. And being the Canadian crowd, Canadian race, Jackson potential Canadian winner, like that was the story. Okay, I've got a minute, this is what I'm doing. It's a game. It's a game of chess, and it's a gamble because you're playing an unknown opponent. You don't know the moves that someone's gonna make, you don't know who's gonna cross the finish line. I just wanna tell the whole story, so. That's why I do what I do. Ah. What's the key? My jersey's in the yeah. People often ask me, like, when's he gonna stop, or when's he gonna, you know, change, get a real job, or change career, and and I'm like, well, he loves it, and you know, if he still loves it, then why should he stop? For six months of the year, he is fully present with his work, and then for the other five, six months of the year, he's fully present with whatever we're doing. See you guys. Bye. Through the bike. Ziggy. 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 decisions we've made about where we're going to live has always been based on our happiness and the environment we can be. This is when we can ride our bikes and do our own things. The goal was to have a base where we could enjoy our off-season in between events, just before events, just after events, or if there's a two-week gap or one-week gap. Can we do what we love there? That's the only way you find Molina is because of the bikes. From the doorstep, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got 15 trails just that you can see, but you can't see them, they're hidden, but they 15 trails are just literally in front here. All between seven and 1100 meter drop. It's just a beautiful valley. It's so sort of remote, but it's actually not. Things haven't really changed that much up here, and it's sort of like you go back in time when you go into the little shops. It just still seems like how it was back in the day. It's pretty special. It's cool living in these small communities and eating like tomatoes and eggs that were grown within 500 meters of where you're buying them, you know, or you're not even buying them because your neighbors are leaving them at your doorstep. And, and through different phases of your life. Because when I was in my 20s, I wouldn't have wanted to live anywhere except Southern California, you know, like. And my parents always thought going to New Zealand, that's boring, you know, but like different stages of your life, or maybe like, maybe you're meant to live in different places. It's it certainly worked out for us. Where we've ended up in life is not by luck. From a very young age, we, we've made decisions that were hard 
and that we stuck with. I feel extremely privileged to live the life that we live. I stand on the side of the tracks all year long taking photos of people enjoying themselves or riding bikes and I want to do what I love and whether it be surfing or mountain biking. I'm just enjoying it too much for what it is. I feel fitter, healthier now than I did last year, so I can do it for another five years, ten years, but or I'll be that guy that sits at El Tuhez on like the little umbrella and the chair. And I've got a little printer plugged into me and I'm like literally take the picture of the dude and he gets to the top of the climb and he can pull the photo out the little fucking printing machine. Like maybe that's what I'm doing. I don't know. Drinking an uproar with an umbrella. That's probably how they're gonna fucking end this interview. <laughs> Work, thank you. Boris, can you ask this guy to move? Uh. Get out the shot. <laughs>